Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about Unigine. Now, Unigine might be a game engine you haven't heard of because initially it was aimed more at the industrial or simulation space. It's been in development for years, many, many years now. But earlier this year, April tenth, twenty twenty, which feels like about nine years ago, ten years ago, they launched Unigine two point one one, and alongside that release, they also launched Community. Now, Community made it free for people up to a hundred thousand dollars. That made Unigine a whole lot more interesting to indie game developers. And we're looking at it today because a new version was just released. So back in, again, April 10th, uh, Unigine 2.11 was released, 2.12 was released throughout the year, and then today we have Unigine 2.13 released, uh, literally this morning. But the thing is, with Unigine, they really undersell their versioning. Each one of these point releases, uh, I think each one was probably had more content than any Unreal or Unity release this year. There is a ton in these releases, and we'll get back to the release notes in a second, which, by the way, they make excellent release notes, so I don't really have to demonstrate things that much, but we've got to do a little bit of eye candy right now, right? So here we are. This is uh, Unigine in action. This is one of the new features that they've got, these new emissive textures. You can do things like simulate um, lit-up airports, or you can do the, the toxic goo that we initially saw on the initial uh, screenshot shot for this particular video or on the thumbnail. Uh, this guy uh, has an all-new global illumination model. The, the editor itself is very clean, nice to work with. Once you start using Unigine, you're probably going to really like it. Your assets are down here. Worlds are opened up as .world files. If you really want to check out Unigine, what you're going to want to do is get the Unigine launcher. It's available right here. You go into products. You get the version. Like I said, the current version is 2.13. Grab that one and then go into the samples. There's a ton of samples, as you saw there. And something else you may have noticed is they're broken down by language. There's C++ samples and C Sharp samples. So yes, you can program Unigine using either the proprietary scripting language, Unigine script, you can use C++, and you can now use C Sharp. So if you are, uh, say, a Unity developer looking for a C Sharp alternative, you may appreciate this one. But the one you're going to want to check out, what we're looking at right now, is the art samples. This is the one that kind of showcases all of the features and functionalities of the language. And then you're off and ready to go. There's also a number of add-ons here to get you started. And one of the new add-ons with 2.13 is this new scans. You can go ahead and download this in. This is a ton of real-world uh, photogrammetry scans of things like rocks and gravel and such to get you up and going. So you got a number of different contact packs available in the add-ons. So you've got some here for trees, roads, uh, vehicles and, and buildings and such, and then special effects. But the new one here is this new scans library. So here we are back in Unigine. Uh, the structure is pretty normal. The world nodes here is basically your scene graph. So we've got a cave here somewhere. Uh, it's, I think I can do... So there's the cave. All right, let's go navigate up to the cave. So you can do uh, right-click, hold down, and then WASD navigation. Scroll bar to uh, speed up our navigation, as you can see. It's a nice little uh, train hole message for me here. So as you're seeing from this example, we have landscape uh, support. A lot of this from being simulation-based, uh, you have... Um, uh, a lot of real world stuff. So you can actually bring in real world maps and recreate things accurately. So as you can see, the landscape engine can support holes in the ground. And there, we flew through it. So you get an idea of what this engine is capable of. Programming wise, uh, it's it's a pleasure to use. I'm actually intending to do a tutorial series on Unigine. It is just a lot of fun to work with. Another thing I really appreciated about Unigine is when I imported assets, like I brought in FBX files that I just randomly created or downloaded off the web or pulled out a Mixamo, it just works. And that's not something I can say every time. So there is a ton of new features and functionalities in this particular release. A one area that really got a lot of love is global illuminations. Here, for example, you can see global illuminations versus voxel probes. So we've got a couple of the different demonstrations going on here. So light maps for static objects, static voxel probes for all dynamic objects, uh, environment ambient light for dynamic objects, and several voxel probes for static and dynamic objects. You can see the results in action. One of the really nice thing about um, their approach in this art world example. There are a ton of different examples here, so you can showcase, you can see that the softness of the, the GI light, and uh, that's what uh, global illumination is all about. It's, it's for simulating light bounces and nice diffusion of shadows around, or lighting shadows around the edges. And here you can see, again, one of the examples showcasing the new functionality here and the new global illumination model. The nice thing with their new global illumination model is that you don't have, um, 
to do a ton of work. It'll do automatic UV unwrapping and such that we'll see. Another feature that is new in here is tessellation, and there's a new sample to showcase that. So this is freshly supported. Tessellation for static meshes was added. This used to exist back in Unigine 1. Uh, base, uh, the mesh base uh, material now supports adaptive hardware accelerated tessellation that subdivides low polygon surfaces into finer meshes to achieve higher visual qualities at lower rendering costs. And let's, let's see some of the examples in action right here. So you can see tessellation in action going on. Let's go look at this dragon. Tessellation displacement off. Tessellation displacement on. So you see here, you can get a ton more detail out of it at a low cost. So shadows from tessellation off. So let's go look at the shadow over there. And tessellation, you can see here the shadows for it being generated are on. So that is some of the new stuff here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch on over to the release notes and uh, get into a little bit more detail. As I mentioned off the hop, Unigine does excellent release notes. So they really showcase what is new in this functionality. So let's jump over now. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna run through this pretty much as fast as I can. Of course, I'm going to link this document, so if you wanna check it out on your own, you can do so. One of the big new features here is a new GPU light mapper tool. So basically, this is what Uni, um, Unity are currently working towards. Well, they just added it in a 0.1 release. So it's a new GPU accelerated light mapping tool for baking global illuminations, providing unprecedented quality results out of the box. Um, light mapping is currently the most effective technology, providing maximum realism of diffuse lights while keeping performance high. Number of light balances, key aspect. No other technique is capable of giving you such high detail global illumination with so many bounces. Uh, when you use light mappings, it doesn't matter how many rays, bounces, or light sources are there are as everything is calculated once and then baked into the textures. Um, they're not the perfect solution, so they've also extended this with voxel probes. We saw that earlier on. Actually, Godot takes a very similar approach to this. Now, another nice thing about this particular release is this next feature is automatic UV unwrapping. As I mentioned earlier on, this is baking the information into the texture. So that means you need to have UV maps for the lighting information to be baked in. And you may not want to create all of these things. The nice thing is it is available for you. Here is the bake lighting tool available for you. Pretty straightforward. You can figure the number of bounces, sample levels, and so on. And then basically let the light maps do their own thing. Another nice thing about Unigine, it is well documented in general. So uh, that is the new light map. There's also a new SRAA or sub pixel reconstructive anti-aliasing, an additional anti-aliasing technology uh, technique that restores small image details, providing a net speed up. So you actually see the results of it in action. So you can really see it on the ladder where you start losing some detail there. Um, more advanced volumetric clouds. This was one of the big things in their previous release, the 2.12 release. Uh, so they've improved their clouds. Uh, so improved shadings, multi-scattering intensity of zero versus one. And then you can see the effect in action here. Pretty minor on the whole, but you can definitely see it. Uh, the new sun uh, attunation parameter replaces the old translucence. So you can see the sun being let through. So sun uh, attenuation of two versus five. Like so it's pretty profound effect uh, in scatter probability implementation, which accounts for dark edges uh, and bases to clouds, uh, sun saturation, and so on. So they have some of the nicest dynamic clouds I have seen yet, especially without needing a plugin or a requirement or anything like that. Uh, new noise reduction functionality. You see some of the results there. Better quality at a lower cost. That's always nice. Other cloud improvements. You have the wispy billowy gradient feature. So if you want your billowy clouds, you can. And the results, again, they look realistic, which is pretty much all you can ask for. As mentioned earlier on, kind of quickly showcased uh, adaptive mesh tessellation is in there. It gives you the ability to add more detail to your meshes at a lower potential cost. Uh, you have faster imposters that are used in place of real geometry, you know, things like often called billboarding, I believe. Uh, I've got their own performance, uh, faster lung with a better look, optimized depth calculations for imposters brought a 10 times performance boost. Uh, so that's definitely nice. You got adjustable fisheye projections. If you want to make people sick, you can do so. Uh, IES profile for lights. Um, there are actually some samples to showcase this stuff in the art sample section. Uh, industry standard uh, way of describing light distribution. Uh, SSGI or screen space global illumination uh, as a screen space effect has a number of weak spots which can cause incorrect brightness of rays. Added a new intensity boost option to fix it. So you can see the intensity is boosted, kind of pulling away some of that overwhelming darkness you're seeing in the image. Uh, we've got advanced color correction controls, uh, now more convenient with the curve-based workflow editor. Um, you can 
control tonal range, tone response, as well as luminance of the scene by adjusting the curves. Uh, so you can see some of them in action right there. Emissive the decals or decals, we saw them in action earlier on. A number of other rendering improvements. I'm not gonna go into that level of detail here. Another cool feature here is export to FBX. I've actually done videos recently on a Unity and Unreal Engine on getting your assets out of those engines so you can get them back into your modeling tool or potentially into another engine. Uh, models from Unity and Scenes can now be exported to the FBX format to be used and edited elsewhere. Uh, each mess surfaces is exported as a separate node, so you can bind them back later on. All object names are kept as per the world node hierarchy. You, you can choose whether to preserve or reset node transformations when exporting. Functionality is implemented as a separate FBX exporter plugin and is available at runtime via the API in the uh, premium sim and engineering edition. So this isn't necessarily in the community edition, unfortunately. Uh, at least for the uh, via the runtime API. But the cool is you, you can actually get your models out and edit them in other tools. Uh, C Sharp got some uh, component improvements. You can now use external classes and structures. Uh, that's definitely nice. A bunch of other miscellaneous little improvements right there. Uh, some improvements to the consoles. And then we got a number of improvements across the engine and API level changes, uh, a new manipulator for shapes, uh, scriptable materials integration, and then a number of other features that we're kind of getting into the details or into the weeds here. Uh, build tool was introduced in 2.10, became more mature, now offering you an advanced dependency tracking and control flexibility. Uh, we've got image generator and multi-channel rendering updates in their various different tools that are available out there. And then as I mentioned early on, there are a number of samples out there. There's a LiDAR sample. This is more for the engineering side of things, or this is in the uh, sim version. And uh, then we've got a crane rope demo. This is sim only. Again, this one implements this rope here as a C++ component. Earthworks demo, uh, the new scans I showed you that those are available. You basically just uh, add them into your project as an add-on, and then those assets are available for you. You can see kind of an example of them, various different rocks, gravels, and barks, and so on. And then we got a number of changes to the lighting samples. Uh, we have the new sandworm tool. They, in the last version, there was some stuff that they did in terms of their terrain. And this one is actually really kind of cool. You can use uh, raster and vector data from your local device, but you can also connect to something such as OpenStreetMaps. Um, to generate terrain using data from OpenStreetMaps, simply mark the desired area on the open world map, enter the URL and the desired zoom value, and that's it. It will pull in the, the real world terrain information so you can see it in action right here. So if you want to actually create your uh, your terrain details as you're seeing in action here uh, from real world data, specifically from the open street map data, you can do so. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, documentation improvements, some new learning materials, and that is that. So if you're interested, Unigine is available. I will, of course, link it. It's available at unigine.com. Now, we talked a couple times about various different versions, and I guess we should cover that quickly before we conclude here. For the vast majority, what you're going to want is the community free version. This is basically, this is what I'm showcasing in this particular case. But there's also engineering, which is six grand a year, and sim, which is contact us. And if you have to ask, you can't afford it kind of price tag. And, and what you're seeing here is mostly this is additional examples. The one thing that um, exists over here that people over here want is access to the... Um, uh, 64-bit precision. So if you want to do something like uh, Grand Theft Audio and you want Grand Theft Audio, Grand Theft Auto, and you want to have massive worlds, 64-bit size worlds, which is kind of an edge case, uh, those are the features locked over here behind the sim. But otherwise, it's mostly stuff that you won't really need. Um, so yeah, that those are the various different versions available. Um, it basically boils down to free, you make less than 100K, you make over K, 100K, um, you need to do $150 a month, no royalties in that particular case. And then when you get into other industries here, um, if you need that technical stuff, then you need to move into engineering. And if you are in defense or you need something, um, you know, it, it, this is generally an area that you're not going to need. Again, the only feature that is missing from these two that most people will want for gaming anyways, is that 64-bit precision. So uh, those are the various different price points. So if you find yourself making more than 100K a year or working in the defense, energy mining, and oil and gas industry, uh, these two won't work for you. But if you make 100K or less free, over 100K, it's 150 a month. And then if you're into the engineering stuff or you're working in those industries specifically, then you gotta move into these tiers right there. So that is the, the breakdown. There, there's more to it. There's a couple of things uh, that are, are missing, such as, OpenGL on Windows, which is a very random thing to, to gate off. 
Uh, all of your various different programming languages are there. So this is really the one that, that people potentially want is that double precision of coordinates. Otherwise, and the vast majority aren't going to want that either. But if you get into weird technical stuff like cave walls or curved screen projectors or like, so if you're doing like high-end presentations or whatever, then you're going to want to be in the other tiers. But for the most part, you're going to find everything that you need is going to be in the community editions. Um, so let me know what you think of Unigine in general and the uh, 2.13 release specifically. I have to give them credit. It's, it's advancing at a staggering rate. It's a really good looking engine. For my brief experiences playing with it, it's a lot of fun to work with. And I stand by, I honestly think that this is the commercial game engine that could give uh, Unity and Unreal the best run for its money. I think it's a better position than for example, Stride slash Zenko. Um, it be interesting to see where CryEngine and Lumberyard end up, but uh, for the, uh, you know, indie pro game developer segment, Unity has a lot of potential. And this is, keep in mind, that even though they're new to the, the indie scene for us, they've been in development for many, many years now. So this is mature technology. And if you check it out, I'm sure you're going to be impressed with the performance you get out of it. So anyway, so that is Unity 2.13, brand new global illumination, all kinds of other lovely stuff in there. Let me know what you thought. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.